Grab the Rapper was introduced to the world at the end of 1996 with a game on the first PlayStation. It follows the titular Parappa, a sweet little dog that wants to catch the eye of his crush, a sunflower named Sunny Funny. In trying to woo her, he gets himself into a bunch of situations, ones I'm sure we can all relate to. Learning to bake a seafood cake for her birthday, learning to drive to impress her, and, of course, having to rap against your mentors to get dibs on the restroom. It is brilliantly vibrant, endlessly charming, positively creative, and most importantly above all else, absolutely sincere. It was a landmark game that helped pave a path for future rhythm games to follow, and instantly created a universe of beloved characters and music that to this day still resonates with people. It was followed up a few years later by a spin-off, Um Jammer Lammy, starring some of the side characters from Parappa, with the series ending with the release of Parappa the Rapper 2 in 2001 on the PlayStation 2. It's been over two decades without an official follow-up, but Parappa's legacy and appeal endures. In the decades since the original game has been re-released, Parappa found his way into PlayStation's own take on Super Smash Bros., deservedly so, had a few anime outings, and even as recently as this past year, had a new promotional clothing line with Japanese brand Wind and Sea. This success and legacy stems from many wonderfully creative minds, but two of the most well-known men responsible for the franchise are Masaya Matsura, from Japanese developer Nana Onsha, and Rodney Greenblatt, an American graphic artist from San Francisco. Matsura and Nana Onsha provided the innovative game design, and Rodney Greenblatt created the unique visual style and characters of the game. All of this is to say that Parappa is an enduring character who will likely be remembered and celebrated for decades to come. So why has there never been a true game follow-up for such a beloved character for over 20 years? That's a great question, and the best guess anyone has is, PlayStation isn't interested in making another. Which is a shame, as the first game especially helped to define the original PlayStation console. As the title of this video you clicked into implies, though, that never stopped the creators from continuing their work and trying to find some way, somehow, to carry on. You may remember the 2010s Kickstarter era of gaming, when there was a constant string of, hey, those people that made that thing you know, they're back to make a new thing that's like the old thing that you know, to varying degrees of success. Former Rare employees formed Playtonic to bring us ukulele, Keiji Inafune infamously conjured Mighty No. 9, and even as recently as a couple years ago, some of the original creators of Sui Koden, yeah, I probably pronounced that wrong, successfully crowdfunded Ayuden Chronicle to capture the old glory days. Nana Onsha threw their hat into the ring with this movement, with Matsura teaming up with Keiichi Yano of Gitaru Man fame, another thing I probably pronounced wrong, to try to make another one of those in 2017 with Project Rap Rabbit. Sadly, Project Rap Rabbit is nothing more than an interesting footnote here, as the pitch only managed to secure around $200,000 of the $1 million goal. Perhaps a few years earlier it could have had a better shot, but already skepticism and weariness of this style of game pitch was on the rise, in addition to the genre's relative niche. So at this moment in time, Project Rap Rabbit will always remain that, a project. However, you may have noted that the game lacks Rodney Greenblatt's signature visual style. The, the kind of thing you might expect in a true, the guys you know are back and making a thing like the thing you know, styled project. Shouldn't a Parappa follow-up have his visual stylings? The answer is, yeah, probably. It's at this point, I can pull back the curtain to a game some of you watching are already familiar with, but undoubtedly many of you aren't. Major Miner's Majestic March released in early 2009 for the Nintendo Wii. If you've never heard of this game, I don't think anyone can blame you. In Japan, the game just barely sold 600 copies in its first two days, which isn't a lot, and it received mostly scathing critical reviews upon release. Edge Magazine gave it a 3 out of 10, and even the sometimes overly generous Nintendo Power could only muster a 6 out of 10 for it. But that said, 
Major Miner's Majestic March was an early predecessor to that style of game we just discussed. It was developed by Nana Onsha, exhibited Rodney Greenblatt's signature style, and was a music rhythm game, just like Parappa. Clearly, the game wasn't particularly great or inspiring, but while 16 hours into The Last of Us Part 2 two years ago, I found myself wondering why literally no one talks about or even seems to know about Major Miner's Majestic March. Uh, thank you, Abby Last of Us, for somehow inspiring this thought. So I went on eBay and I bought a copy of the game. Then, uh, two years later, just, just the other day, I finally played it. And I fully and immediately understand everything. I don't want this to be a hit piece on a game hardly anyone discusses, but I'm afraid it will come off that way. I think the tone of this conversation has already been set, so I want to quote Rodney Greenblatt in one of the few, if not the only, statements about the game post-release. No, I was not happy about Major Miner's Majestic March. Pretty much everything went wrong. I could write a book about the compounded mistakes made by hardworking and talented people. He touches on something that I think is important to keep in mind when we approach discussing media, even what seem like easy targets. Forgettable games and bad games don't appear from a void. Very rarely does anyone set out to make end products that are disliked or forgotten. Major Miner's Majestic March was programmed by real people. Real people modeled and textured all of the assets you see. People had to localize the game into other languages. People had to sit in offices and think about how to market the game. Some gave interviews. Some programmed the sound. Someone oversaw the project. Some barely had contact with it, but made their mark nonetheless. Real people gave up real time from their lives that they can't get back. So it's always paramount to keep that in mind when approaching discussion. Oh, and by the way, I just needed footage of game developers working at a studio. This isn't a dig at any Ubisoft or Naughty Dog or whoever I use here. So don't look into it, please. Thank you. But to put it lightly, immediately I understood everything after playing. Like Parappa, the premise here is pretty simple. The game follows Major Minor, who for some reason makes me think of Post Malone, I, I don't know, dreaming of being a marching band leader. His best friend Tom urges him to start a marching band and to firmly grasp Major Minor's late great-great-grandmother Gladiola's baton. He does so, and a drum magically appears in Tom's possession, and great-great-grandmother Gladiola begins speaking to Major Minor. We have been a great drum major family for generations. So, oh, Major Minor, now it's your turn to be a great drum major, too! This sounds pretty silly when I type it out and then proceed to speak it out loud as a grown adult man, but hey, so far we're doing well! The Parappa games were filled with exceedingly silly things, like a 42-story high cake made by Joe Chin, so this is charming enough. I hate to say it, though, but... This is where the positives end for the experience of the game, at, at least for me. Uh, even more than that, I hate that I'll keep comparing this game to Parappa the Rapper for not doing things that it did, but it so easily communicates things that this game just completely foregoes. See, one of the things I love about Parappa is the pure whimsy of all of the characters. Everyone is silly and saying some dumb thing that makes me chuckle. It isn't deep, but it's genuine and has a charm to just how silly it is. The story takes some ridiculous turns to get where it wants to take you, but everything makes sense and conveys. Major Miner's Majestic March takes a different approach, opting for a narrated storybook style. So for the most part, the only voices you'll hear in the story are the narrator and great-great-grandmother Gladiola's voice, which is, um... They had to listen to GGGG and overcome their fear. March, march, keep on marching! March, march, keep on marching! Keep on marching! Yeah. Fun in small doses, but not the kind of voice you want to hear a whole lot of. Yet, you hear a whole lot of her. Keep on marching really doesn't have the same impact as the very similar I've Gotta Believe from the Parappa titles, also. While a narrated storybook approach isn't immediately damning, Nothing is done to make up for the lack of character and charm this robs the game of. The narration is cute in a vacuum, but unknowingly works to stifle the proceedings and make the game cross the line into kiddie territory, instead of the preferred all-ages appeal. 
the other shoe waiting to drop here is just that nothing really happens here. Like, things do happen, of course, but the story cutscenes are all, Major Minor, march to the place. The place was nice. Everyone had a fun time. Then, they march to another place. The mundaneity is sobering. It's especially shocking for the folk who made things like a driver's test and getting a haircut feel like the most exciting things in the world in Games Briar. There are a few attempts to liven things up, one of them involving possibly my favorite Rodney Greenblatt design, Eggplant Fox. He's a purple fox with an eggplant head that wants to join the marching band but is too shy, so instead he opts to try and ruin it. Uh, the police handle him and he has no real arc and hardly ever gets time on screen, so for as much as I love him, nothing is done with him. The game also has Major Minor lose the baton for A stage and then has Tom disappear without any explanation, but these issues are both unceremoniously resolved with one-off comments that do not leave an impression of any kind. I do wish there was more to say, but that really does cover it. Major Minor wants to march. He marches. He builds confidence through the game. And then a happy ending is achieved. You'll go to interesting looking places with characters that have that classic Greenblatt charm, but barely interact with any of them. The pieces are all here for zany things to happen, and it just doesn't. It's a shame. Just by being on the Nintendo Wii, I'm sure you've already figured out the main gameplay loop. In lieu of a wand inhabited by your late great-great-grandmother IRL, you'll grab your Wii Remote and firmly move it up and down to control a marching rhythm. It's a cute idea, and it never really moves past being a cute idea. You can move the tempo faster or slower by moving the remote faster or slower, and as you'll march along, you can inspire people to join your marching band by moving the remote left or right at the correct times. The same idea lets you get items along the marching path that improve the mood of your band, and similarly, sometimes detrimental items exist close to potential band members or items you actually want that will lower the morale of your crew if you accidentally get them. You can get an idea of if your tempo is right or not by the icons above their heads. A circle means the pace is perfect for them. If it becomes an arrow pointing left or right, you need to adjust your tempo to suit their needs. And if the icon turns to red, they'll become tired and go home. Once in a while, you'll get a chance to wave the remote around haphazardly in certain directions for bonus points. And with that, that's basically the gameplay. Oh, and once in a while, Eggplant Fox disguises himself and hides in a level. If you accidentally recruit him, he causes all kinds of wacky and unwanted mischief, and you have to wave your remote to get certain items that appear to get rid of him, and then he leaves. This may feel like where I'd compare the gameplay unfavorably to Parappa the Rapper, but I guess to be fair, the charm of Parappa carries it a lot. Most players will engage with it as a novel Simon Says affair, and trying to rap cool often seems like an unclear process of wanton trial and error until the desired effect is achieved. There's technically less flexibility in Major Minor's Majestic March, I guess, but I think it outlines what it wants a player to try and strive for more clearly. I don't necessarily think it's more fun, but I'll at least give it some points for this specific thing since I'd want another Parappa entry to make its more involved mechanics make a little more sense. Now, I've read online that a lot of people had control issues with Major Minor with their inputs not being properly received. Unfortunately, I had the same issue. So often I feel like I was correctly pointing to recruit a band member or get an item, and it just wouldn't happen. It made the game's seven short stages feel more confusing than they should have. Which brings us to the last major talking point of the game, its stages and more specifically, its music. The game features around 25 marching band songs with different sounds depending on how well you're treating your band and how many players of each instrument you have following your orders performing. It's actually kind of neat to have a bad run of a stage and then go back to do it better to hear a more fully featured version of the track, but two days removed from playing it, I've already forgotten almost every piece of music in the game. The one that I can remember, I only really remember because it sounds like Violet City from Pokemon Gold, Silver, and Crystal. I, I don't know. Is this just me? They especially love marching parades. Anyway, the game is very short. I'd beaten in under an hour, but that's not a bad thing on its own. I, I love many short games that give me something so specifically entertaining or endearing, 
that I keep coming back to it to feel that way again. The Parappa games are a beautiful example of this. I know every word to every song from those games because I adore playing them over and over. The weird and unique songs describing character motivations and quirks are so catchy that I'll even listen to them outside of the game on my own time. The production quality is great, especially for their time, and the lyrics do a lot. Major Minor's Majestic March has marching band music, which is neat but did not leave any impact on me whatsoever. It's another area where that trademark zany pedigree could have been imbued here to create something unique and memorable, but it just wasn't. Truthfully, the only tracks here I do remember are the handful of weird electronic tracks that play in menus and over the credits. These stick out to me as places I've expected some pretty neat, richly performed band pieces, but these truly don't sound good, even to my untrained ear. And there is a stage where Major Minor loses the baton, like I mentioned, which means all of the bandmates lose their magical instruments, leading them to improvise with finding different objects to substitute as instruments. I think the vibe it's going for is inspirational, like yeah, even without the magic wand, we all pulled together and pulled it off. The end result, though, is a cacophony of noise. Even in Um Jammer Lammy, where Lammy plays a guitar instead of singing, she was still bouncing off of a character delivering vocals in an original song to help convey traits, character, and motivations. You'll get the occasional encouragement or concern from GGGG, the baton, but that's it. Nothing makes an impression. I wanted to know what happened to Parappa the Rapper's spiritual successor, why no one ever talks about it. I set out to play this game in an expectation that there at least could be some silly things to riff on as a YouTube funny man, but regretfully there isn't even material for that. The experience of playing Major Minor's Majestic March feels so vapid and completely misguided that Greenblatt's earlier quote rings even truer. I'd love to read that hypothetical book about this game, about why so many Many decisions were made and how this ended up this way. This far removed from the game, I think telling the story of a game like this would contribute a ton of fascinating insight and help allow the legacy of Major Minor's Majestic March to be an example to learn from for many creative minds. Sadly, what we're left with instead is an oft-forgotten footnote in the shadow of a different, more popular franchise. Sometimes, human beings put their heart and time into projects that just don't pan out. Sometimes these don't see the light of day, and sometimes they're given the chance to reach that larger audience and still don't ace the landing. It's a sobering reminder that sometimes even the best intentions don't necessarily induce the best results. It's always important to keep yourself going after a project doesn't go quite how you want. Remember to always keep the faith. Even Parappa the Rapper followed separate multimedia experiments from Matsura and Greenblatt. So, be sure to keep going and keep pushing yourself to be you, even if things don't always land. I think that's the one thing we can take away from Major Minor's Majestic March. Thank you for giving me your time, and thank you for letting me give this little soapbox speech at the end here. Maybe someday we still will see Parappa the Rapper 3, but until then, these are the reasons why Parappa the Rapper has probably never gotten a sequel. And... A huge appreciative thank you to my patrons, especially ones like Adrian, Buckles Chucklow, Calico Plus, Cooking Mama, Daniel, Goldstorm07, Harry, Hero, James Boss, Jeet, Joey, Lewis Jones, Smoothies, Svandelica, That Trav Guy, and The Crazy Even. 